issue all of us have, if we don't compress the ball, is the hands are too far back. So we're gonna feel them. What's the opposite of back? Forward. The issue we have is we have not enough hinge. So what are we gonna feel? Too much hinge. The issue is we swing, the shaft gets too far over the top or kicks out. So what are we gonna feel? Too far inside. So the gentleman, I had all three of those. Shaft is a little over the top, release the angles too early, hands back. So just flip it. Hands even with the ball, thumbs up towards the right shoulder. So we're gonna increase hinge so it's above parallel. You're gonna feel that in your forearms, like that's max hinge. And the shaft's over four o'clock. That's what I wanna feel my delivery position is. Hey guys, Eric here out at the beautiful Don Law Golf Academy at Osprey Point Golf Club in Boca Raton, Florida. Now in today's video, we're gonna talk about three keys to getting more lag and shaft lean that I don't think you've ever seen or heard before. Now, before we dive into that and I show you all that, just two quick things. Number one, I'm gonna be doing in-person coaching uh, down here in Boca during the winter. Would love to have you. We'll put a link down in the description. They'll say a cutie scheduling if you wanna come down, do some in-person coaching. If not, would love to work with you online, right from the comfort of your own home. Send me your golf swings. Uh, myself and our coaches will build you a customized practice plan. You get access to all of our master classes, all the videos on the site, everything within our community, all for that just one low monthly payment. Would love to see you at Cagorno golf.com we'll put that down in the description as well now in today's video three keys to shaft lean um, and lag that I don't think you've ever seen before now what we're gonna do is show you on the screen um, here as we go a couple of the checkpoints and these checkpoints I'm gonna show you are what I see good players do with their irons and this is specific to controlling the irons first during the downswing and what this does enables them to get lag and enables them to get the handle forward to compress the ball, hit the ball solid, take a divot after the ball, everything we want day in, day out. You and I both want to go to the golf course and at minimum, the one thing we care most about is solid contact. Hit the ball solid day after day. Maybe the direction's off, but I want to hit it solid. So here's what I would suggest doing if you're someone who's struggling with that. The three checkpoints first are these things. And again, you'll see these with some of the pros on the screen. During the downswing, by the time the hands get even with the right thigh or leg from face on, hands with the right thigh or leg, the shaft is about parallel to the ground. This would be below parallel, this would be above parallel, this would be parallel. By the time the hands get even with the ball, if we do the line down, the shaft's on what we'll call a 45 degree angle. So pointed down towards the ground. And then by impact here, by the time the club gets impact, the hands are right over the left shoe or the lead shoe. And those checkpoints are fairly universal. Hands inside the right thigh, shaft parallel. Hands even with the ball, shaft at 45. Hands in line with the left shoe, club at the ball. Anyone who strikes their irons good day in and day out does roughly that. Now, what I see most people who come to me look like is what? The hands are too far behind the right thigh by the time the shaft's already behind parallel or below parallel. By the time the hands get even with the ball, the shaft's probably down here. And by the time we get to impact, the shaft looks like this. So here's what we want. Boom, boom, boom. Here's what usually we get. Here, here, here. So there's really two issues there. Number one, we don't get the hands forward enough. And number two, we don't have enough hinge in the wrists. Okay, now what I want to show you is a drill that I did, and I'm going to put this together um, that I did with a gentleman in person. And every time I do this with someone, especially in person from face on, anyone who has a cast or a flip issue or anything like this, when you do these and exaggerate enough, you get the shaft lean, you get the compression. Here's how the drill works. So we're going to take the setup position. I've got two sticks on the ground here. Now one of these, the white one, is on my toe line, and the blue one I put just inside the toe line. If we look at a clock for a second, straight forward's 12 o'clock, one, two, three o'clock down my toe line's the white stick. I've got that at about 3.30, about 3.30 for the drill. That'll come uh, back in a minute. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the top of my swing, and what I wanna do is I wanna exaggerate the opposite of my issue. I'm gonna feel like I get the hands, even with the golf ball, I'm going to feel like at that point in time, the shaft is above parallel still. And I'm going to get the shaft from my point of view over the four o'clock stick on the ground. Those are going to be my three checkpoints. Now, why do I do all three of those? Because anytime I have a problem, I fix it by doing the opposite 
and exaggerating. The issue all of us have, if we don't compress the ball, is the hands are too far back. So we're gonna feel, what's the opposite of back? Forward. The issue we have is we have not enough hinge. So what are we gonna feel? Too much hinge. The issue is we swing, the shaft gets too far over the top or kicks out. So what are we gonna feel? Too far inside. So the gentleman, I had all three of those. Shaft was a little over the top, release the angles too early, hands back. So just flip it. Hands even with the ball, thumbs up towards the right shoulder. So we're gonna increase hinge so it's above parallel. You're gonna feel that in your forearms, like that's max hinge. And the shaft's over four o'clock. That's what I wanna feel my delivery position is. Now, we don't need to actually get that far, but that's what I want you to feel. So how you practice this is like this. You go back up to the top, slowly, you're not going fast here. Hands even with the ball, check from face on the shaft's not parallel, it's above parallel. So you're taking your thumbs and pulling them up towards your right shoulder, and the shaft, from my point of view, is right over that blue stick. So it's not in line with my hands, it's actually slightly inside. One, I go back up to the top, hands even with the ball, thumbs up towards my right shoulder, shaft inside two, and now I'm gonna make a little swing and feel like I go through with those same exact feels. It feels like my hands are working more forward, my thumbs are up towards my right shoulder, and the shaft's inside. What I'm looking to do here is record my swing, and at the moment of impact, hit the piece that I care about, which is when the club's hitting the ball, my hands are over my left shoe. That's the shaftling that we want for compression. So I would do that once or twice, and then hit a little half one feeling those same things. Let me get that feel one more time here. Then I hit a little one, and I feel those same pieces. Now, if we record that and look at that from face on, I would then look at my shaft lean, and I'm gonna say, okay, was my hands, or were my hands, was my hands, hello, were my hands inside over my left shoe at impact? If they were not, then I'm gonna exaggerate my hands being more forward. But Eric, I thought you're not supposed to pull your hands forward. Well, you always fix a problem by doing the opposite. So if you're a golfer who looks like this at impact, you better get your hands forward because you need to look like this. You're not gonna get them more back, right? You have to get them more forward. So same thing up to the top, hands even with the ball, thumbs pulled up and to the right, towards my shoulder so the shaft is above parallel and it's right over the blue, so it's hitting from inside. Hands even with the ball, shaft above parallel inside. I feel it's exaggerated, that's good, that's what we want. Then we'll go ahead and do the little shot with the same feels. Beautiful, that's a nice, I bet if we look at that, my shaft's over my left shoe at impact. Now, how much you exaggerate, how much you do it, depends on where you're coming from. So if you already have pretty good shaft lean, maybe you just need a little more, then you probably only need to do this a little bit of exaggeration. If you have a lot of flip with your hands way back behind your right leg, you gotta do a lot of exaggeration. I do this 20, 30 reps a day, every day for the end of time until you get your handle forward, right? So be a nice warm up drill. Now, this piece with the shaft inside, again, is just a stock little checkpoint. You'll see from the picture, that club head being just inside the hands is fine. In reality, if it was right here, it'd be fine too, depending upon where you're coming from. If you normally are way over the top, I would not only get it over the blue, I'd add a red stick back here, and I would get it over the red. Like, but Eric, that's way behind, exactly. If you're way out here, you have to feel way behind you, right? So wherever you're at, do the opposite. We'll do one more here. Hands even with the ball, thumbs up and to the right, shaft over the blue. Hands even with the ball, even with the ball. And then when I'm hitting, I'm trying to get back to that same feel. Yeah, beautiful. So that's how I would create lag. That's how I would create shaft lean. I would do all the other things we talk about as well. I'd make sure my club face was square to close, right? My grip, my setup, all that stuff. But this would be, hey, Eric, my club face is good, right? My club face already tilted down. I've got a good grip. My, uh, but I can't get the shaft forward. What do I do? How do I practice it? This is how you do it. You do it with video feedback. You exaggerate. Maybe you join CabernetGolf.com so we can confirm it. Maybe not. That'll be in the description down below. But this is how I would practice those pieces. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, as always, leave a comment down below.
Hey guys, thanks for watching today's video. If you liked the video, do us a favor, click that little gray like button, thumbs up button down there for us, really helps us out. Leave a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't. The more action you do, the more that helps YouTube send our videos to more people, really helps us out. Would love to talk to you more in the comments section down below. If you did enjoy this video, we're gonna put another uh, recommended video, YouTube video here in the top corner. We'll also put the logo to cagornogolf.com. That'll take you right there if you wanna work with me. I would love to work with you. Thank you guys for watching.